This is a little demo of a little app called Rollomatic 3. What Rollomatic 3 does is allows you to batch assign roles to multi channel files and rename them in the inspector, rename the components. Um, assigning roles to regular files where you only want one role is pretty easy. You would just simply select a bunch of clips. Click on the little uh, triangle here in your roles, change it to stereo effects, done. By the same token, it's really easy to um, rename the component. You just do that and you type in a name and then all these components will show up with that name. Easy. However, with multi-channel files, you can't do that. As you'll see, there's just one role here and if you were to try and you know, change the role, you can only change it to one, so what you end up having to do, and everybody knows this, is uh, open it in a timeline, select each role, go up to the info tab, change the role, select the next one, change the role, select the next one. So that can be, it's easy if you've got a couple of files, it's really tedious if you have dozens or more. Um, so Rollomatic will allow you to do that, and it will also uh, rename the components so this name will change to match the role if you have not renamed them previously. If they do have existing names, you can choose to leave those names. There is a small limitation in that interleaved files. This is a surround file. Now you would think that if you said, no, it's not really surround, it's six mono, look. But Rollomatic can't rename these components or give roles to those components separately because if you open it in the timeline, you'll see that it's just one component, basically. Um, but I'm going to leave it in here just for demonstration purposes. Basically, how you use Rollomatic is you gather all your um, clips that you would like to assign common roles. In other words, even though these have different numbers of channels, roll one is going to go to channel one, roll two to channel two, three to three, four to four, five to five, six, et cetera, et cetera. If there's more channels than roles, it's obviously not going to do anything. The first thing you need to do is get the uh, clips that have the most number of channels for each type of clip to the top of the list in uh, ascending list view. The easiest way to do that is to put a leading character in front of it. There's a leading character in front of that one. This one has eight channels, which is the most of any audio. So let's get this one to go to the top again. Oh, one. Just resort it. There you go. These two have the most channels. So that's pretty much it. You're all set up. Anything else doesn't matter. Um, obviously, you can mix audio and video if you want to. It's probably better to make events that have clips with similar amounts of channels and just to be sure, but you don't have to. Then select the event. You export XML. Um, that's a good name, I guess. <clears throat> then you go down to wherever you happen to have Rollomatic and you select the FCP XML file you just made, give it a new name, uh, don't accidentally delete FCP XML, the file extension. Uh, there we go, lovely. And then you read this annoying pre-run reminder, all this stuff is in the instructions which you should probably read. Um, it's not, it's really easy, but just some things you wanna know. Then you do that, then you will be presented with your video clip role selection. So you just go, you know, channel one, channel two, channel three, probably misspelled it, whatever. Channel four, yeah, H2, H3, eh, I screwed up, I'll hit cancel. Channel one, channel two, three, channel four. Then you can confirm it. That's all good. Now we're on to our audio only clips. Channel one, channel two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
you will notice that uh, audio clip lanes, just because of the way they're constructed in the XML, start with zero. So just remember that zero is one, one is two, two is three, et cetera, et cetera. And again, you will get a chance to confirm that you've done it correctly. I have, okay. Now, in the surround file that we looked at earlier, the components were already named because it had IDs in it or something. If, if, the, if there are no custom names in your components, you won't see this dialog. It'll just automatically name them to match the role. And you can always change that in the inspector and Final Cut. It's pretty easy to do. If there are existing names, for instance, in this case, it's a surround file, but in other cases, you may have metadata that's been added to files by a camera or something. You may not want that to change to match the roles that you just ent entered. So the default is do not replace. I'm going to go ahead and say replace. And there you're done. Then you just go back here, import XML. Find the thing you just made, import it, sucks it all back in, and bada bing. There we go. And you will see that these are all nicely named to match the roles. Here's the original. Here is the new one. It's all very nice, except for this surround file. You will see that nothing changed. Um, it did give it a role. It gave the, you know, the main component a role, but it did not do anything to all these. So just be aware of that. Interleaved stereo, interleaved six channel, whatever. If what your uh, inspector sees it as is one file, you know, you'll see the, the master quote unquote file was given the role and there's the role and that's it. And I hope you find it useful.